Alleluia Ministries International is a Bible-believing and Christ-centered church. We believe Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. His power is still at work in the church today, just as it was in the time of the Bible. We are AMI. In the context of this story, which is extremely remarkable, Israel having a prophet, a man with double portion, was going through great calamity. Israel was oppressed by the Syrian. The Syrian had dealt a great disaster to Israel, though they had a prophet. Why suffer while you have a prophet? Due to the disobedience, they keep on being beaten by the enemy. The presence of a prophet in your life is a sign of remembrance, meaning God has remembered you. Every time God had remembered his people, he raised the man. He became sick. And this is the sickness that will kill him. I came to God and asked, how will your servant with double anointing die of sickness? God said, it is important that the anointing that you carry for them works for you too. This is a presentation of Alleluia Ministries International. Elisha became sick. He was a carrier of double portion of what his spiritual father had. His mind and heart was to serve God. He forgot that as a conduit, if he is unwell, the serving, the distribution will not be well. My spiritual mama told me, you got to take rest. I said, I have a lot to do. And she said, don't die before your time. Well, I want everybody to be prosperous. I want to remain poor. Mm -hmm. I'll take the blame and I'll take the punch for everyone. And forget my own children at home. And when I'm not here, nobody is there for them. The devil is a liar. The anointing must work for you too. Amen. What you are carrying will begin to work for you from I this day forward. That. Is there any intercessor in the house? Can I see the hand of intercessors? Hear me, intercessors. As you stand before God, you don't pray for you. You pray for them. You ask God to bless them. You ask God to open doors for them. You ask God to meet them at the point of their need. But hear what God is saying. Before they receive what you're praying for them for, it will manifest first in your life. In the name of Jesus. Or else, you will see them healed. And you die sick. You'll be in the corner of the street begging while the anointing has produced Martha Melonia. That anointing will work for you. It, 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 will, work it, it for will work me. for you. It will work for me. Please have a seat. Then it carries on. As the men of God were sick, the king heard of it and ran to him. And he said, My father, my father, my father. Who is your man of God to you? You got to define your relationship. This is the king of the land. He is a king not by vote, by blood. He was born to rule. He goes to the man of God and says, My father, my father, my father. My father means my source. My connecting point. The well from where I bring my water from. My father! We have pastors. To have a pastor is a good thing. But to have a daddy is a whole new level altogether. And as he cried and said, my father, my father... He carried on and said something that has been known only to be said to Elijah. And he said, 
the chariots of Israel and the horsemen. Meaning, you are the center of power. The chariots of Israel and horsemen. They called one man the chariots. It represented more than the armies of Israel. It was at a, even with the army you will fail, but with him you can't. Hear me. We are living in a time where men, through lack of understanding, is trying to kick men out of the way, not understanding that the Jesus Christ, through the work of the cross, is trying to establish men back in the garden. We want to have a relationship with God that is isolated from anybody, me, my cat, and God. God has placed men for you. Those men are not your God. They are not your mediators. They are set there to be facilitators of your miracle. They have been equipped for you. They are there to serve you. They serve God only through serving you. So as you reject them, you reject your point of God. My father, my father, my father, the chariot of Israel and their horsemen. And Elisha say, take a bow and some arrows. So he took himself a bow and some arrows. Hear me. One of the reasons why it is practically impossible to be with a true prophet of God and lose battles is because of the navigation. A true prophet of God is the voice of God in your life. Amen. He hears from God and gives you instruction. Somehow, many times you feel that it's not enough. It is too much. I cannot handle it. Whatever the case may be, the presence of a prophet is not to be an advisor. It's to guide you. When a true prophet of God is in your life, God himself is in your life and is leading you through him step by step. He tells you do and don't. Go and stop. And there is absolutely no way you can lose a battle if you are informed. Amen. I receive it. He may do it in a personal level or he may do it in general. But if there is a prophet in your life, it is impossible for you to go wrong. And one of the key things that the prophet uses in taking you where God wants you to be is in giving you direction step by step through instruction, through opening your eyes, enlightening your spirit. So he said to him, after the king say, my father, my father, chariots of Israel and his horsemen, he said, take a bowl and some arrows. What does it have to do with my greetings? What does it have to do with the current situation? The reason why I'm coming to you is because I'm losing my mind. We are under uh, great attacks. We are oppressed by the enemy. It seems like they are winning. Now you are about to depart and leave me alone. You are about to die. My father don't do this to me. And all your father is saying, take a bow and some arrows. Somebody do this. Take a spiritual bow or an invisible and put some arrows. Okay, pull it down. Now you see, take a bowl and some arrows. So he took himself a ball and some arrows verse 16 then he said to the king of israel put your hand on your ball so he put his hand on his ball will you do that mm -hmm. something is about to happen i receive it though i can see some of you are holding your ball and your arrow as a violet whatever it is Something is about to happen. I, I want to see everyone with his ball and arrow. Mm -hmm. Look 
after this, keep it like that. Look, I'm giving an instruction right now because I'm training you to an end instruction. Some of you are looking at me just like this. This is a how. Having a prophet, you're still falling down. Get some balls. Put your arrows. And hear this. That was not enough. The Bible says this verse 16. And Elisha put his hands on the king's hands. Keep it like that. I got to teach you something. If there is a prophet in your life, the prophet should hold your hand. And the prophet holds your hands only when your umbilical cord is linked to his umbilical cord. Meaning that I'm not alone. I'm doing what Joshua had to do on the battlefield. But I have my Moses whose hands are lifted. Josh took a ball and arrow. But before shooting, those sickly, Elisha knew that the here is prophetic. He knew that I hear. Unless I stretch my hand and touch the hand of the king, nothing will happen. Right. Uh, I pity those who have no direction. Mm. I pity those who have nobody to hold a hand in battle. The things of the spirit are not to be taken as the things of life. That's right. The spiritual realm is higher and bigger. And here there is a cold in the spiritual side of this text. He did not just take a ball and some arrows. The man of God touched him. There must be a direct link between you and your prophet. You must establish it. It may be a praise. It may be a seed. It may be uh, uh, a stand. Whatever it is, you must make sure that there is a physical and a direct touch between you and the prophet it doesn't mean that you will have an opportunity all the time to have dinner with him no but there are mechanisms ways to be in touch with him maybe to an hello or through oh god my spiritual father or through a symbol of authority whatever it is there must be a direct connection between you and your men of god Amen. now with the ball and the arrows the man of god touched him korea mama zeta may i touch somebody today he told me my hands are not my hands. He said, my hands are his hands. And he said, every one I will ever touch, it will not be my hands touching, it will be his hand touching. And he told me, every time I reach to touch, I should remember, it is not me, it is him. And by virtue of it being him, miracles will begin to manifest. Breakthrough, healing, deliverance will begin to manifest. Then he said to him, Open the east window and you open it. We are about to go places. Whatever limited you, a door is being opened. I, I say a window is being opened. I I am prophesying to somebody under the sound of my voice wherever you are the east window is being opened the east window is being because if you shoot it in the house it will come back to you God is enlarging your territory I receive it don't get tired. It doesn't matter if it will take two hours, but today you are getting what God has in store for you. The devil like it or not, your day has come. He said, open the east window and open it. Keep it like that. This is prophetic. The wind of the Holy Ghost will blow, but hear this. If you read this text, you will realize that the men of God 
accurately with precision is leading the king step by step this is one of the reason why you can never go wrong he said to him take a ball he took a ball he said again take some arrows he took some arrows put them together and he said open the east window he opened his window if you have the ear to hear the heart to obey the strength to apply your life will never be the same again are you ready <laughs> look at the person next to you uh, see I'm in business now I'm in business now <laughs> if you're watching me live get your arrow take that cell phone or that device put it down don't hold it in your hand put your arrow we're about to shoot we're about to shoot we're about to shoot here the seven don't shoot one another and then don't, don't shoot one another and he said to him shoot can I see you shoot shoot that devil shoot that devil shoot that sickness shoot that poverty uh -huh. shoot the devil is a liar Jesus. he's getting it today mama ma. now here Elisha said shoot and he shot this is all that there is in the recipe do and he did shoot and he saw shoot if he did not shoot nothing would have manifested what causes men and women in the presence of a great prophet under the anointing of a great prophet still not partake of the blessing is disobedience the spirit of it's okay. I'll do it tomorrow. There is no urgency. Mm, I'll, I'll do it. Maybe this time is not mine. My time is tomorrow. He says, shoot! He didn't say, oh, how, how am I going to shoot? I, I'm not a soldier. He shot! Do it again. Take position. The devil is a liar. I said that devil is a liar. He came to you and said, I'm here to stay. The devil is a liar. He came to take your man. He came to take your woman. He took your children. He closed your womb. The devil is a liar. He locked your doors and blocked your ways. The devil is a liar. He brought sickness and disease in you and said you will die tomorrow. You will die and fall. The devil is a liar. Are you ready? Are you ready? Shoot! is shot. Hear what the man of God said. The arrow of the Lord's deliverance and the arrow of deliverance from Syria. For you must track the Syrian at Apec till you have destroyed them all. Hey. I am pronouncing deliverance over you. I am declaring deliverance over you. You will destroy your enemies in the name of Jesus. I say you will destroy them in the name of Jesus. In Jesus name. May every enemy of your progress fall before you. I am, I am making pro pronouncement, prophetic pronouncement over you. May every enemy of your destiny fall before you. Amen. 
so shall it be. It cannot be otherwise. The devil is alive. Now, verse 18, and he said, take the arrows. So he refused to take them. No. So he took them. Take the arrows. So he took them. Hear me. If you will not allow your heart to be led by one appointed by God for you, you will keep on falling in the same pit dug by the enemy for you. Is then he say, take the arrows. He could have said that I just did. And nothing happened. No wind, no new sun. Everything is normal. I thought that maybe something spiritual will happen. There will be an earthquake. <laughs> because I shot the arrow. For the second time, he said, take the arrow. So, took them. The key in the prophetic that allows you to be a beneficiary, a full beneficiary of what God is doing is that when he speaks to you, you do it. That's right. Now, man, dip yourself seven times in the Jordan River. That's all. It may not make sense to you. Just do it. Do it. If you were blessed by this video, be sure to subscribe to our channel. You can catch Pastor Arf Lukau on AMI TV on the public bouquet or on our live stream on AMITV.com. You can follow Pastor Arf Lukau on all social media platforms at Arf Lukau.